I don't know if I can play in the dark or not. There's a switch, Bob. Oh, yes, there it is. And it's on. Yeah, yeah. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rick Halley Center. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Rick Alexander non-pedal room. Um, and special thanks to Stephen Cowell, who's worked incredibly hard to make this room happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the PSGA for their support. Thanks for your kind donations. Couldn't do it. And we're going to start off with someone. It's a, this is kind of a, a tradition. We start off with the great Billy Robinson from That's Nashville, Tennessee, and this guy has oh, played sorry, with everybody. Yeah. Maybe he'll tell you some stories, too. Yeah, I can tell up here. I couldn't tell. Let's hear it for Billy Robinson. Thank oh, you. thank you very much. I really appreciate being here. I'll tell you what. Uh, I'm going to tell you a few stories. And, uh, you know, I started on the Grand Ole Opry. I'm talking about a long, long, long time ago. Actually, I started in 1948. I was on a show called the Prince Albert Show. Prince Albert was a smoking tobacco. You can't advertise that anymore, any now. But uh, uh, back then, uh, you could, and uh, that was our sponsor. And uh, we had a different guest every Saturday night on the Prince Albert Show. And by the way, this was a show that went all over the United States. It went overseas. Uh, Armed Forces Radio. Everybody played this this show because it was a NBC Coast to Coast show. We had a guy named Floyd Tillman, he was guest on the show, and he did a tune called I Love You So Much It Hurts. And I love that song, it's a, it's a beautiful song, a little waltz, and I'd like to do that for you first. I Love You So Much It Hurts, in the key of F, fellas. You have to tell everybody the key. You ready, waltz?
fun song to play. I love to play that thing. It brings back a lot of memories to me. You know, uh, we had a bass fiddle player in the band uh, that I was in, the Red Foley Band. And actually, when you was on the NBC show, you were staff uh, musician at WSM, so we got a chance to play with everybody. And uh, we had a, a guy that, uh, Les Paul, uh, came to see us. We were working in New York, and uh, he came to see, actually, our bass player who worked with the Les Paul Trio, a guy named Ernie Newton. And Ernie had a bass fiddle that uh, had a snare drum on the side of it. Did you ever see that? And he, he held this brush in one hand and he'd play with the thumb. And uh, Les Paul come to see him. We were playing in New York and uh, he had a big hit record out called High High the Moon. And uh, I'd like to do that song for you now. That's not, it's not a country song, but it's a song that I love to play. And I, I had to learn to play it because it had more than three chords in it. <laughs> but, uh, I'd like to do that for you now, High High the Moon. I've got the key of cheese. singer led the Grand Ole Opry in 1900 and uh, 1949. A lot of nice things happened in 1949 because that was the second year I was on the Grand Ole Opry. And uh, when uh, Eddie Arnold left, the reason he left was he had to be so many, so many Saturday nights you had to be on the Grand Ole Opry and he was making so much money doing his personal appearances. He didn't want to do that. So he left the Grand Ole Opry and the Grand Ole Opry was looking for somebody to take his place. And they went to Waverly, Tennessee, and they found a young man named George Morgan. Now, George Morgan had written a song called Candy Kisses. And uh, he, came, uh, he came to the Grand Ole Opry, and of course the staff band, I was part of the staff band, so I got the opportunity to work with him and also record with him. And I recorded about eight songs with him before he hired his, hired his band. And uh, Mr. Ray, uh, I'd like to get, let's, let's do this song for him, The Candy Kisses, okay, in the key of C, fellas. Ray Allen. <laughs> Mean more to you 
requested tune was a tune called I Overlooked an Orchid and I had the uh, opportunity to record that with him and uh, I'd like to do that for you now Overlooked an Orchid and this is a great Carl Smith tune. Now he said that he'd cut a lot of records and he had bigger hits than this but this is the one he got the most requests for I Overlooked an Orchid and the key of G fellas. We get to turn off the twang switch on this one right? <laughs>
Now the rose has lost its color, oh, but the orchid is still the same. And I'm alone to face these lonely years. I didn't see the orchid, I was searching for the rose. So now I pay the price with bitter tears. I overlook an orchid while searching for the road. The orchid that I overlooked was you. And the rose that I was searching for turned out to be untrue. The orchid now I find my dear was you. The orchid now I find my dear was you. Billy Robinson. I'm playing too loud and I got too much trouble. <laughs> well, I, I'm going to have to get out in the audience and listen to me and see. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, that sounds great. I didn't say trouble, I said trouble. <laughs> no, no. Let's see what that does. Uh, we had another guy come to the Grand Ole Opry in 1949. A lot of things happened that year. That hadn't been but 69 years ago, by the way. Golly, <laughs> oh, time passes fast when you're having a good time, don't it? <laughs> we had a guy, and his name was Hank Williams. Now, we're not talking about Hank Williams, Jr. We're talking about Hank Williams, Sr. Amen. And uh, I had the good fortune to, uh, to work with him until he, until he hired uh, Don Helms, who was his steel guitar player, and most of his, uh, most of his uh, time that he, that he was in business of singing. But uh, we'd like to do a song in his memory, a tune called Cold, Cold Heart. And I had the pleasure of working with Hank many times doing this song for him on the Prince Albert Show and on the WSM. This is a great Hank Williams song called Cold, Cold Heart. Key of D. Why do you run and hide from life to 
try it, just ain't smart. What can I free you down for, mine and melt your cold, cold heart? What can I free you down for, mine and melt your cold, cold heart? Mr. Billy Robinson. You know, the Grand Ole Opry made its first trip overseas in 1949, and I was part of the staff band that had me and Grady Martin, and uh, and we had half of the band was Roy Acuff's band. Uh, we had uh, Red Foley and Eva Foley. By the way, a lot of people don't know that uh, uh, Eva Foley and uh, uh, Red Foley was uh, Pat Boone's uh, father-in-law. That was a... Uh, so just for whatever you reason, uh, you might want to know that. <laughs> You know, we went to Germany and uh, we uh, played a lot of places in Germany. We went to Berlin and Frankfurt and Munich and we was all over. We was playing for for the Air Force. And uh, when we went to Berlin, uh, you had to be really careful because they had the Berlin sector, they had the British sector, had the American sector. And when you, if you got into the, uh, the Russian sector, you was in deep trouble. And what they did, they uh, give us all orders. And the orders were written in Russian. And Hank Williams looked at me and he looked at those orders and he said, Billy, those Russians could never win a war because they don't even know how to spell. <laughs> we also, we took some trips around, went to the Heidelberg Castle and uh, I went up there with, uh, with Hank Williams and uh, they had a, a wine barrel there and this wine barrel held 50, 5,500 gallons of wine, I believe, that, uh, probably, but it was under this castle, the Heidelberg Castle. And uh, Hank looked at me and he says, uh, you think we can get that plane thing on the plane? So <laughs> he liked a little wine, as you can see. Uh, you know, my grandkids didn't particularly care for uh, the steel guitar until uh, I did this song for them. And uh, a guy named Salty Holmes. I don't know if anybody remembers Salty or not, but he was a great harmonica player. And I decided I'd try to do that on a steel guitar, and it's called the Mama Blues. And I like to do that for you now. But this is one, now this is not for adults. This is for, for the little kids, for the grandkids, and I've got great grandkids. And I'd like to do that song for you now, called the Mama Blues. What do you want? You want your mama? Well, holler if your mama. All right, now she can't hear that. Holler where she can hear you. That's a little bit better. Now tell these folks that and say, I want, I want my mama. All right. Well, where is your mama? I think she went out on the farm. How did she get out there? You got out there on, on an old train, right? Yeah. Well, tell me what, uh, what do they have out there on the farm? They've got what? They got the chickens out there, and, and they got the old moo cows out there, and, and they got little bitty baby chickens out there, Sam. What was that? That was me laying an egg. I think I'm laying one doing this song. <laughs> all right, I'll tell you what, let's do. Let's do a little poem for your mama. Is that all right? All right. I said, okay. Okay, let's do this song. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, uh oh, the lamb was sure to go. <laughs> I think, though, let's go ahead and finish this song. Is that all right? 
Back uh, when I was on the uh, on the Grand Ole Opry, and uh, you know you travel with a bass fiddle over your neck, and uh, or sometimes it'd be on top of the, the uh, car, and a lot of times uh, we all took turns uh, turns traveling, uh, uh, driving the car, and while we were traveling, and we had a guy named Sleepy McDaniel, and uh, <laughs> Sleepy Sleepy was uh, ri uh, driving and driving, and it was it was somebody else's turn to uh, to drive. And Sleepy says, I'm tired. And he went to sleep and says, uh, you somebody else drive. So while Sleepy was, uh, was sleeping there, he had been sleeping about uh, probably 10 minutes. And uh, we all come up with an idea. We was going to put a little trick on him. So you couldn't wake him up once he went to sleep. So we wound his watch ahead four hours. <laughs> and then they had a clock. On the uh, uh, on the car, you know, you used to have those clocks on the automobiles, and we wound it ahead four hours, and we woke Sleepy up. <laughs> hey, Sleepy, it's your time to drive again. He said, "My goodness, he don't." He said, it "Seemed like I've been sleeping only ten minutes," which he had. <laughs> so he started driving again. So in a, uh, he's driving a couple of hours, and uh, all of a sudden, Sleepy started hollering. He said, "Goodness gracious, wake up, everybody! Something's bad is wrong." And I said, what's, what's the matter, Sleepy? He said, it's 10 o'clock in the morning, and the sun hadn't come up yet. <laughs> True story. <laughs> Let's see. There's so many, so many stories. Uh, you know, uh, uh, when you're in the business that I'm in, you, you meet so many different people, and uh, there's so many stories and, and fun and things that you have. And uh, a lot of these things have been in books, in the history books. And I'd like to tell you a story about... Uh, Elvis Presley and Heartbreak Hotel. Uh, I was uh, playing in a place in Nashville, uh, a little uh, nightclub there, and I met this fella. I'd never seen this fella before in my life. And we got to talking. He said, uh, I'm uh, Daytona Beach, Florida, and uh, I'd like to get a band to come down and play. He said, my business is really, really off. And uh, so uh, I said, uh, well, what can you pay him? He said, I can't pay him anything. I said, well, good luck. Well, no, I said, I know some people who might like to have a vacation. He said, I, I can do this for you. I can give them a vacation. And, uh, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll feed them and I'll put them up in a hotel, which, which we did. I called a guy named Buddy Killen. I don't know if anybody knows who Buddy Killen is and, I, and his wife is June Webb. And I called my brother Floyd Robinson and we went to... Uh, we went to Florida and we planned for nothing. And uh, a lady come in who uh, was a songwriter and uh, she said, uh, f we got talking to Buddy Killen. Buddy Killen had just got a job at Tree Publishing Company and uh, he was making $35 a week and he was down there with me playing for nothing. And uh, anyway, this lady come in and she says, I can get you tickets over to see this young man who was just getting started and that was Elvis Presley. Yeah. She went over and uh, got us tickets. We went backstage and uh, we got to meet him. And they got to talking. And Buddy Killen, who was with Tree Publishing Company, and this lady who wrote Heartbreak Hotel, we sold that thing to Elvis Presley. We were down there playing for nothing. And can you imagine Buddy Killen sold and, and published that song, one of the biggest publishing songs that Tree Publishing had never done. Buddy Killen ended up selling Tree Publishing Company for millions of dollars down there playing with me for nothing. And uh, they asked me, what did you get out of that? I said I had a nice vacation. And that was, <laughs> but that's how he got Heartbreak Hotel, the true story. And that's in a lot of books. All right, let's do another tune here, a tune called Caravan, all right? All right. Thank you. 
know, so many stories, I don't know if I need to tell another story or take a drink of water. <laughs> I'd like to do a, I think if Jimmy Dickens did that, take me as I am and let me go. All right, this will be in the key of, of C, fellas, and uh, Jimmy Dickens, take me as I'm going to let me go. to do a song for you now. <clears throat> First one is a sugar, sugar foot rag and wildwood flower. Now we're going to do wildwood flower in the key of C and then I'll go to sugar foot rag in the key of A, okay? And uh, I got a little eight bar introduction. Thank you. 